I'll be starting to record the lecture. So we will be in the lecture. Okay, so module one review on the basics of radiation. The objectives review the sources and types of radiation. Justify the need to minimize unnecessary radiation exposure to humans. Distinguish the effects or distinguish uh, between somatic and genetic radiation effects. Explain the objectives of a radiation protection program. Discuss the legal and ethical implication of the application of radiation radiation protection. Okay. So first, what is radiation? Okay. So there are many ways to describe radiation. One of which is radiation is a process by which energy travels through a vacuum or, em or empty space. Okay. The other one is radiation is pertaining to the energy itself. So it can be the process and it can be the energy. Okay? So radiation <coughs> travels either in waves or particles. Okay? And also some uh, types of radiation have both properties of a wave and properties of a particle. So that's why we have the uh, the concept of uh, wave particle duality. Okay? So yung image na nakikita nyo, animated, it is a graphic representation of radiation. Okay? So radiation, particularly the electromagnetic radiation. Okay. So there are two types of radiation, mainly the ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. Okay, when we say ionizing radiation, it is a type of radiation okay, that has uh, sufficient, uh, sufficient enough energy to eject an orbital electron thus producing ions or radiation. Okay, so, what ano pinagkaiba ng ionizing radiation sa non-ionizing radiation? So, basically, it is their energy. Okay? Ionizing radiation, it is capable of removing or ejecting an orbital electron. Thus producing heat and radiation. Non-ionizing radiation naman are types of radiation that doesn't have enough energy to eject to remove an orbital electron but it has sufficient energy to cause excitation of orbital electrons thus producing heat. Okay? So yun yung pagkakaiba nila. And ionizing radiation is further divided into two categories. The particulate radiation and the electromagnetic radiation. Particulate radiations are radiation that has uh, particles a property. Or they are radiation uh, that is in or that are in uh, particle 
form such as the alpha emission, the beta plus and beta minus emission, the protons, okay, the, the neuro, neu, neutrons and electrons. Okay? So yung neutrons, ano pa yan? Uh, maraming klase ng uh, neutron radiation. Mayroong fast neutron, slow neutron, etc. Okay? Then electromagnetic, so that includes the gamma rays and x-rays. Okay? So refresh lang natin yung inyong mga memories. So ayan, particulate radiation, so alpha particle. So ang katumb uh, katumbas ng alpha particle or yung mismo alpha particle is uh, a helium, an atom helium or yung nucleus ng at ng helium atom which consists of two proton and two neutron. Okay? So kapag alpha emission, yan yung nagiging, yung ine-eject na radiation ng uh, isang radioisotope. Isang uh, radioactive helium atom. Then, the beta particle. Okay, so beta particle. Beta minus. So, negatively charged yun. So, electron. Okay. Electron yun. Okay. Then, kapag naman beta plus emission, so, positron yung na-eject from the uh, from the what they call that the nucleus of the uh, radioactive uh, atom or isotope. Okay. So, dalawang klase yung ating beta particle. It can either be an electron or it can uh, or positron. Okay. Then, proton and neutron. So, itong proton and neutron, uh, normally, uh, you can uh, hear them used in uh, uh, nuclear energy. Okay? So, usually, sila ay uh, sa mga nuclear power plant nyo uh, maririnig na ginagamit. Hindi sila ginagamit sa diagnostic and therapeutic uh, radiation. Okay? Then we have the EMR or EME, EMF. So do we have the electromagnetic radiation? Okay, so, katulad ng representation kanina ng uh, radiation, so, electromagnetic radiation is produced by uh, a changing or by changing electric and, or and magnetic field. So, kung diba yung nakita nyo yung uh, illustration or representation na yung waves niya ay dalawang color red and blue so uh, an uh, electromagnetic ra radiation ay naproproduce or have the properties of both electric and magnetic field okay, kaya siya kaya nga siya ay electromagnetic radiation or electromagnetic wave so, this electromagnetic radiation, okay, ay naproproduce in forms of energy that is called a photon. And it travels through a vacuum in the, with the speed of light. 
So that is 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. Okay. So walang mass ang lahat ng electromagnetic radiation. So lahat ng electromagnetic radiation mapa electric uh, waves ba yan? Uh, radio waves microwaves x-rays lahat sila isa ng speed isa ng uh, at lahat sila pare-parehas na walang mass okay so its energy is determined or oh, determines whether it is ionizing or non-ionizing radiation. So energy is related to its wavelength. Okay? The shorter the wavelength, the greater the energy. The longer the wavelength, the lesser the energy. And the greater the energy, does the sufficient, uh, it can sufficiently uh, ionize an atom while it uh, the lesser the energy it can also or it can only affect an atom by means of excitation so this is the electromagnetic uh, spectrum okay so na makikita niyo diyan yung wavelength okay Sa kakawalin yung ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. Okay. So, when it comes to visibility, alin lang ba yung nakikita natin? So nakikita lang natin is nandun sa region ng visible light. Okay, so frequency. Frequency or bilang or dami ng, ng wave in a certain period of time. And of course, energy of one photon. Or energy in... Uh, electron volts okay now we go to the sources of ionizing radiation so there are two sources we have the naturally occurring sources and the artificial or man-made sources okay. so of course when we say naturally occurring sources Kasama dito yung terrestrial. Okay. When we say terrestrial, it can be found sa earth, sa soil, sa, cave, sa caves, sa mountains, sa, sa water, etc. So they are radionuclides or radioactive atoms that can be found in what I have said earlier. Okay? So another uh, source or another source or natural, naturally occurring source is the cosmic rays. So cosmic galing outside the earth from the cosmos. Okay? So high energy charged particle from outer space. Okay, producing secondary particles. Okay. Then, ano pa yung naturally occurring fly, fly, eye, uh, fly ash? So, waste containing radioactive material emitted by coal-fired power plants. Okay. So, by product siya ng uh, coal-fired power plants. So, radioactivity, so, yan. So,
So, radioactivity, bakit siya nandito? Kasi, okay, yung ating terrestrial source of radiation, okay, nakakakuha tayo ng dose, and they are present there because of radioactivity. So, what is radioactivity? It is the spontaneous emission of radiation okay, from an unstable particle or uh, unstable uh, radioactive atom. So, ano yung mga na-produce? We have the alpha emission and the beta emission. Okay? So, as you will see, diba, may luma. This is the nucleus. You can see the nucleus of the may meron siyang ini-eject dito do, sa beta meron din siyang ini-eject ang na-eject ay electron sa so beta particle emission and dito sa alpha particle emission dalawang neutron and dalawang proton so radioactive sources sayang so Solar radiation, nuclear medicine, x-rays, diagnostic, uh, cosmic rays, consumer products, radioactive waste, terrestrial radiation, food and drinks, nuclear power, each other. And radon sa air. Okay, so that means radiation is all around us. Okay, we absorb radiation kahit hindi tayo nagpapa x-ray, nagpapa CT scan or, or nag-undergo ng any uh, radiologic or examination. So, terrestrial radiation. Okay, so ano ba itong ter terrestrial? Sabi ko nga, uh, ito yung mga radioactive materials na matatagpuan sa sa soil, okay? sa caves, sa mountains, at pwede rin siyang matagpuan sa mga walls na mga modern structures. Dahil sa parasan bagawa yung mga walls sa modern structures, to hindi sa mga materials din na minimina diba? sa mga mountains, sa mga caves. Okay? So, common radionuclides created during the formation of Earth. So, nandiyan yung ating radioactive potassium which is potassium 40 or K40. So, they are found in bananas. They are found throughout the human body in plant fertilizers and anywhere else stable potassium exists. Okay, so nandiyan din yung uh, radioactive rubidium or RB87. So it is found in Brazilian nuts among other things. So mga uh, nuts na nang, nagmula sa Brazil. Okay, so another... Oh, pero the, ang pinakamalaking... A contributor ng terrestrial radiation is radium 226. Okay? So bakit? Saan ba siya makikita? So siya ay uh, madetect sa mga igneous rocks. Okay? Yung mga sedentary, mga mo, sandstones. Okay? Sandstones. Okay? mga limestones na ginagamit sa sa wall okay then fly ash from coal burning plants so it contains more radiation than uh, that of nuclear or oil fired power plants kaya hanggang sa ngayon lahat yung mga coal fired power plants ay talagang tinututulan kasi 
uh, yung effect niya sa environment ay very severe and detrimental. Pero mo mas malala pa siya sa isang nuclear power plant or oil fired power plant. So magsasabi nga not only the environment but also the people near the power plant or kung saan malapit yung pinagtatapunan ng waste ng power plant. Kasi yung waste ay radioactive. Okay, so may kinalaman din yung uh, altitude or yung lugar kung gaano kataas sa uh, natatanggap na radiation ng isang tao every year. So, if you are living uh, near the sea level, okay, you will be receiving 30 millirem per year from cosmic radiation. However, kapag naman ikaw ay 10,000 feet above the sea level, kay makatanggap ka ng 140 millirem per year from cosmic radiation. Okay, so see the difference. The higher you are, okay, the greater the amount of radiation that you will receive from the cosmic rays. Okay, another example, comparison ng background radiation. So this is what we call background radiation. Kumbaga, uh, background, kaya tinawag siyang background, because uh, the re this radiation uh, is received doon sa mismong uh, lugar kung saan ikaw ay namumuhay. Kaya siya ay background radiation ng tawag. So, let's compare. Uh, dalawang tao, yung isang tao, madalas, pag siya ay nagtatravel, sakay siya ng aeroplano. At yung isa naman, nagtatravel siya, sakay siya ng barko. Okay. So, sa palagay nyo, do sa dalawang tao na yun, alin doon ang may mas mataas na radiation dose na matatanggap per year. Yung tao na laging nagtatravel by airplane or yung tao laging nagtatravel by uh, by sea or by boat So, ano sagot nyo? By air, yung nasa airplane, syempre. Kasi nga, the higher you are, the greater the exposure to radiation from the cosmic rays. Now we move to the artificial or man-made sources. So dito, so na, ito na yung, pam yung mga uh, familiar, na, very familiar sa atin na sources ng radiation. So we have the devices that produces radiation such as x-ray machines, CT scanners, na, uh, yung makikita nyo dito sa uh, mga pictures, we have the linear accelerator okay so ito yung linear accelerator this is a machine used to trip 
patient with cancers. Okay. So, yan ay gumagamit ng either uh, x-rays or electron or proton radiation. Mega electron volts ang ginagamit dyan. Okay. Then, we have the uh, to ay uh, cyclotron dito sa cyclotron na uh, pro-produce ng mga radionuclides that can be used in uh, nuclear medicine eh, hindi lang yung nagagamit sa nuclear medicine kung hindi pati yung mga ginagamit sa mga nuclear power plant but itong nasa image dito na cyclotron Ito ay specially made for uh, diagnostic imaging. Okay? Then we have of course the nuclear power plant, power reactors, okay? and yeah, radioactive fallout. Yeah. Pag sumabog ang isang atomic bomb or nuclear bomb, so, it can cause radioactive fallout. Ano ba yung radioactive fallout? So, it is the burst of energy of radiation. Once na sumabog yung bomba, di ba nagkakaroon ng mushroom, mushroom cloud? So, kasabay ng mushroom cloud yung emission ng radiation. And that is called a radioactive fallout. So that uh, radioactive fallout can travel okay, hundreds of kilometers. Okay, from the uh, site of explosion. Okay. So do you have any questions so far? May tanong ba? Okay. So radioactive materials can either be solid, liquid, or gas. Then yung devices. Yan. Okay, in the Philippine setting, again, uh, radioactive materials okay, are governed or they are under the supervision of the Philippine Nuclear Research Institute which is under the Department of Science and Technology okay and for the uh, radiation devices so they are regulated by the Center for Radiation or for Device Regulation Radiation Health and Research under ng Food and Drugs Administration ng Department of Health. Okay? So yung uh, nuclear medicine ang nagbibigay ng license doon ay PNRI. Well for the yan, CT scan, X-ray, Mamo fluoro, okay, mga dental x-rays, linear accelerator, tomotherapy, machines, yan, mga ganyan. Yan lahat ay under ng CDRRHR, okay. Clear po tayo doon. Okay. So medical x-ray device. So yeah. So yung nasa mga pictures na uh, uh, nakikita niyo yung mga sinauna. 
ma yung ating kat- kamukha ng ating x-ray tube yung nasa picture okay then yung control panel tingnan nyo mukha siyang radio okay so ngayon tayo naman ay digital na pero sa school sa school ay ganyan ang ating control panel ah uh, dial, nakadial analog so nakafraction ang ano ang time nakafraction so kaya kailangan alam nyo yung pagcompute ng time fraction okay so ito ay si arm fluoroscopy Usually, ginagamit ang CRM sa uh, interventional radiology and at the same time sa mga post-operation sa ER or pre-operation sa, sa ER. Masa yung uh, uh, CRM normally, siya ay nakapark sa Uh, operating room. Okay. If you are a rad tech that uh, use or assigned to use the CR, you should always wear your lead apron, lead goggles, thyroid shield. Okay. So, meron kang lead cap, mas okay. And of course, kailangan, huwag kakalimutan na isuot yung ating personal dosimeter. Okay, yung OSL or TLD. Okay. So, yan, CT scanner. X-ray dif- diffractometer. Di ba, X-ray dif- diffraction. Siya ay between uh, 40 to 60 ki- kilo voltage peak only. So these are used for the X-ray diffractometer is used in research. Sa mga laboratories. So ito another type of X-ray diffractometer. So yung kanina ay kita mo yung loob. Ito ay totally enclosed. Hindi mo makikita yung nangyayari sa loob. Okay, hey, so that's uh, and, uh, artificial or man-made sources. Di siyempre yung ating mga products, consumer products. Okay, consumer products includes the television sets. Okay. Of course, meron siyang low energy na electromagnetic radiation. Okay? So, bakit? So, eh, nakalagay dyan, low energy x-rays. Okay? So, itong television sets na nag emit ng low energy x-rays, ito yung mga sinaunang television sets. Yung mga makakapalang likod. Yung may mga ah uh, vacuum tube okay so yun yung may mga radiation or yun yung, yung may mga x-ray low energy x-ray yung mga sinauna eh ngayon naman yung ating mga TV sets they are now tubeless okay so ano na lang yung mga radiation na nakukuha natin sa mga TV sets ngayon. Of course, the uh, microwave, radio frequency, visible light. So, yan yung mga makukuha natin radiation sa television sets na modern. Then, smoke detectors. Yes. Smoke detectors. Meron siyang uranium-238. Okay. 
yung mga smoke detectors merong a small amount of uranium 238 and then some products or services treatment of agricultural products okay long lasting light bulbs etc so lahat yan ay may kanya kanyang uh, bilang ng uh, artificially made or man-made uh, radiation. Okay? Yung mga glow in the dark, okay, so, meron siyang radiation. Okay? So, ito yung uh, percentage. So, ito ay based sa US. So, total exposure, as you can see, okay, ang pinakamalaki ay radon. Okay. So, the greatest uh, we received the, the greatest uh, radiation amount of radiation from earth uh, man oh, sorry from naturally occurring sources of radiation okay however malaki rin yung portion yung sa man made and sa man made ang pinakamalaking contributor ay eto medical x-rays diba 11% now 18% okay so the total US average dose equivalent is 360 milliren per year. And now we go to the effects of ionizing radiation or human biological response to radiation. <laughs> Okay, so question. Are the deterministic effects of radiation the same with probabilistic effects of radiation? Okay, balikan natin yung inyong radiobiology. Ang deterministic effects ba ay kaparehas lang ng probabilistic effects? Naalala nyo pa ba ang difference, ang difference ng deterministic at stochastic? Sige, anong pagkakaiba ng, ng deterministic at stochastic? Ano pa? Ano pa? Yun lang. Yung determinist mo, may sample. Tapos yung practice ka lang sa term. Tapos, senior po ata din sa Yun lang, wala na. 
Eh bakit tinawag na, eh bakit tinawag na deterministic effects? Bakit tinawag na deterministic effects? Determine anong determine? Yes. Ah. Ano po? Madali po siyang makita tulad po ng ano, sa hearing po na uh, obvious po na nakikita sa uh, sa matawal ng tao and immediate din po yung reaction niya. Well, dun po sa stochastic effect, uh, matagal po siya bago mag-occur sa katawal and minsan po hindi pa po siya ang katawal. Oh. Okay. So basically when we say deterministic so uh, the the amount or the severity of exposure or the amount of radiation those receive okay it determines the effects. Yun ba ibig niya sabihin? Yun ba ibig niya sabihin? Kaya siya naging deterministic or tinawag na deterministic dahil sa nakabase or nadedetermina ng uh, amount ng radiation na natanggap ng isang tao at sa yung quality na radiation na natanggap ng isang tao ay nagdetermine o nadedetermina ng dalawang bagay na yun yung epekto ng radiation sa katawan ng tao Is that what you mean? Yun ba ibig sabihin? Yun ba ibig nyo sabihin? So therefore, deterministic effects are non-probabilistic. Tama ba? Ano po? Deterministic effects are na, are non-probabilistic effects. So, kung deterministic effects ay may existence ng threshold, so that means within the threshold or below the threshold, no effects will manifest. And if you have, if you uh, exceed the threshold, then there will be manifestation of radiation effects. Tama ba? Yes. Okay. So, if that is the case, is, is it safe to say that deterministic effects are non-probabilistic effects?
Ah, no, yes or no. Is it safe to say that deterministic effects are non-probabilistic effects? Ano, ano, ano yung other term for deterministic effects? So, uh, bilanggit kanina yung early effects. Ano pa? Ano pang, ano pang other term for deterministic effects? Na ginagamit. So, we have the non-stochastic effects. Ano pa? Ano? So, another term used is non-probabilistic effects. Bakit non-probabilistic? Kasi, may existence ng threshold. At dahil nga may existence ng threshold, it is already determined that if you reach a certain threshold, this kind of effect will be seen. So therefore, it is non-probabilistic. It is no longer probable. Why? Because it is sure na. Sure na siya, determined na siya. Kasi when we say probabilistic, it is random. It may or it may not occur. Okay? So therefore, deterministic early effects, non-stochastic, and non-probabilistic effects. Iisa lang yung lahat. Okay? So ito yung mga example ng deterministic Next. Early appearance, days to weeks, excluding cataract, existence of non-threshold, okay? existence non-threshold, so specific for particular effect, specific threshold for a specific effect, below those thresholds, no effect. Above threshold severity depends on the level of radiation dose. Mas mataas ang dose, mas severe ang effect. Okay. So katulad niya nakikita nyo, yan ay mga radiation burns. Diba? Grabe o. Oh. Halos... Yung paa, grabe. Grabe, grabe. Okay. So, yan. Exposure of 5 to 10 seconds. Oh, radiation burn. nag lumabas yung wound after 25 days. Then, stochastic. Okay. So, linear din siya. Yun nga lang walang threshold. Okay. So, the higher the dose, the higher the 
risk. Doon sa deterministic, the higher the dose, the higher the severity of the effect. Ito, the higher the dose, the higher the risk of getting the disease. Okay. So therefore, it is random. Okay. The, the, the disease may occur or the disease may not occur. So therefore, it is probabilistic. May probability lang. Hindi siya sure. Okay? May, may question sa dalawang effects. Meron ba? Baka nalito lalo kayo. Ayun. So bakit uh, dinagdag yung other terms? Kasi sa mga board, sa board exam, hindi natin alam kung alin yung gagamitin na term ng examiner. Okay? Kaya dapat familiar kayo doon sa ibang mga terms na ginagamit. Okay? So, ionizing radiation, I have already uh, discussed that earlier. So, ito yung type ng radiation. Hindi sufficient yung energy, but it can cause excitation. And excitation, anong product niya? Heat. Okay? So, types of non-ionizing radiation. So, we have visible light, ultraviolet, infrared, laser. So, yung laser ay... Uh, between the infrared and visible light, RF, microwave, okay, then uh, extremely low frequency RF pa rin yan. Okay, so sinama dito yung ultrasound energy. Okay, so technically speaking, uh, technically speaking, hindi po sakop ng electromagnetic radiation ang ultrasound. Bakit? Kasi siya ay mechanical energy. Okay, ultrasound, yung naproproduce na frequency, radio frequency ng ultrasound ay from mechanical energy, not electromagnetic energy. Okay? So sources of non-ionizing radiation, so ayan, power lines, electric cables, cell phones, telecommunication facilities, MRI, laser sources, ultraviolet and infrared lamps. May hazard ba sila? Of course, merong hazard. May effects. Okay, for ultraviolet radiation, So, nandiyan yung photokeratitis, cataracts, eye cancer, sunburn, premature aging, and skin cancer. Diba? Uh, yung mga uh, few months uh, nag nagumpisa yung uh, pandemic, di ba nabalita sa TV, na may mga gumagamit na ultraviolet lights or lamps for uh, disinfection ng mga rooms pero hindi sila hindi nila ginamit ng proper so anong result nagkaroon ng photokeratitis at mga skin burns okay so hindi po natin ginagamit ang mga ultraviolet lamps okay na may tao sa loob ng room. Dapat ay wala pa ring tao sa loob ng room. Uh, di ba? Um, based sa ating electromagnetic spectrum, so ultraviolet rays ay naglalaro between 
ionizing and non-ionizing. Okay, so therefore, its energy is high. Okay, that's why it can cause skin, uh, skin cancer and eye cancer. Yun nga lang hanggang skin cancer lang. Kasi yung penetrability niya ay uh, hindi masyadong mataas. Okay. For ultrasound, so ayan, high intensity is cavitation, cavitation and heating. Okay? For electric and magnetic fields, so nandiyan yung electrofusion, electrical coupling. For laser, intense heating. Okay, blinding if our eye is heat. Okay, then radio frequency and microwaves, electrical co coupling and heating also. So basically, sa mga non-ionizing radiation, uh, ang pinaka-effect lang nila sa body ay heat. Ba Bakit heat? Dahil uh, uh, non-ionizing radiation on only causes uh, excitation. Okay? Or vibration. Okay, so radiation protection. So this is concerned with the protection of individuals, their progeny, and mankind as a whole, while still allowing necessary activities from which radiation exposure might result. Ano ibig sabihin ng progeny? Offspring, descendants. The children, okay? So, ito yung concern ng radiation protection. Okay? Dahil nga alam naman natin or al alam ng mga uh, nag-aral ng uh, radiation physics or nuclear physics, that radiation is all around us. Uh, therefore, uh, nagkaroon ng uh, drive to have uh, standards regarding radiation protection and safety. Lalo na nung uh, na sumikat yung x-ray, di ba? Ultimo pagsusukat ng sapatos, ini x-ray pa yung paa. Okay? Hanggang sa uh, isa ito sa mga naging awa uh, award na binibigay during sa mga beauty pageant. Di ba yung uh, best uh, best x-ray. <laughs> Ayaw ako nung title yun. Ako nung award. Basta yung pinakamagandang itsura ng ng uh, spine yata or ng katawan or ng bones okay so binibigyan siya ng award pero yun nga dahil sa uh, pagda pagdami ng paggamit ng x-ray sa mga walang kabulo, kabuluhang bagay so ano nangyari kaya unti-unti silang na Ano nangyari? Okay. Of course, nagkaroon ng mga effects. Okay. Yung iba na matay due to cancers. Okay. Yung iba ay nagkaroon ng mga uh, diseases in their own lifetime. Okay. So, yan yung ah uh, Definition natin ng radiation protection. Okay. So what are the objectives or aims of radiation protection? The primary aim of radiation protection is to protect people and the environment from harmful effects of exposure to ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. So yan yung general aim. For your main objective. 
Okay. Meron din siyang sub-aim or sub-problem or ang pag pwede tawag dyan uh, specific objectives. Okay. So, number one, to prevent occurrence of deterministic effects. Okay. Then, number two, to minimize the probability of the occurrence of stochastic effects. Okay. So, di ba? Probability of occurrence of stochastic effects. Bakit probability? Because it is not yet certain. So, it can happen or it can it may not happen. Okay? So, because of the objectives and primary aim of radiation protection, so the ICRP or the International Commission for Radiological Protection, so issued this system of dose limitation. So no practice shall be adopted unless its introduction produces a positive net benefit. Ibig sabihin, the positive or the benefits must outweigh the risk. Okay? Then, all exposures shall be kept as low as as low as reasonably achievable or the ALARA principle. Okay? Then, those equivalent to individuals shall not exceed the limits recommended for the appropriate circumstances by the Commission. What Commission? International Commission for Radiological Protection. Okay? My question. My question. Okay. So let us continue. Okay. So the uh, ICRP and the International uh, Agency for Atomic Energy or uh, International Atomic Energy Agency or IEA. Okay. So nagkaroon meron silang uh, nilabas na three uh, principles of radiation protection. Okay. We have the principle of justification, the principle of optimization, and the principle of those limits. Okay. So justification. So when we say justification, okay, sinasabi ng principle na ito that all radiographic or radiologic activity or examination uh, ay kailangan siya ay justified. Ibig sabihin may karampatang uh, dahilan the benefit must outweigh the risk. Okay. So, no practice shall be adopted unless it is uh, unless its introduction produces a positive net benefit. Any decision that alters the radiation exposure situation should do more good than harm. Justification. Okay? 
Kaya po, tayo mga PodTech, okay, before we do a certain procedure, ang ginagawa natin ay hinahanap natin sa pasyente yung doctor's request. Nahanapan natin ang doctor's request. Kung ano yung specific na procedure na gagawin. Okay? So that is justification. We must justify the procedure. And next is the optimization. In the principle of optimization, the Alara principle comes in. As low as reasonably achievable. How? Okay. By utilizing the three cardinal principles of radiation protection, the time, distance, and shielding. What's the reason to minimize those? Okay. So, maxim minimize the time, maximize the distance, and maximize also the shielding. Okay. So, time, less time, less radiation exposure. Distance, effective and easy, okay, dahil sa inverse square law. Doubling the distance from the source okay decreases dose by a factor of and tripling the distance okay decreases the dose by the factor of nine okay My question, okay, and of course shielding, okay, there are materials that absorb radiation, particularly lead and other materials such as barium, etc. Those limits, so we have the non-occupational and occupational dose limits. For radiation workers, 10, oh, sorry, 20 millisievert per year. Okay, then nakalista yung dose limit. Okay, my question to those limits and some uh, major principle of radiation protection.
May question po ba? Diyan sa God. Okay. So, yung pong those limits, so they are a guide for us, especially mga radiation workers. Okay? If we if we reach the dose limit, so hindi mo na tayo iaalam mga mga radiation producing equipment. Okay. So what are the legal implications and ethical implications in the application of radiation protection? Okay, what do you think are the legal and ethical implications? No, are you still there? So question and answer tayo. So ano palagay nyo ang magiging legal at ethical implication ng pag apply ng radiation protection? Hala, wala. Meron ba? Wala yatang legal at ethical implication eh. Para makaiwas sa irrigation and lawsuit. Yes. Pero yun, yun ba talaga? Promote awareness. Okay, so legal. Okay, dahil sa alam natin, itong mga radiation protection na ito. Okay, so alam natin as radiation workers, yung ating mga karapatan. Kapag tayo ay lumampas sa annual dose limits, that means we should uh, not work in the radiation area. Okay? Either bigyan ka ng institution mo ng radiation leave or i-assign ka ng uh, department supervisor sa mga trabaho na walang kinalaman sa pag-handle ng radiation. Okay? So, number one. Okay? So, ayun. Promote occupational health and safety. Okay? Ano pa? Okay? Dahil sa alam mo, yung mga pro, mga uh, 
paraan kung paano makapag uh, protect o makaprotect laban sa radiation so syempre maproprotektan mo hindi lang yung sarili mo kung hindi yung iyong patients eh pasyente bakit? sa, sa, sa papanong paraan okay? para uh, maiwasan yung mga tinatawag natin na repeat examination Eh, okay. dahil sa alam natin na ang radiation dose na matatanggap ng tao ay may possible effect sa katawan ng tao. So, alam din natin na kailangan i-minimize natin yung unnecessary exposure to radiation. Di ba? Okay. That falls sa ethical aspects. Okay, sa legal, maraming ano sa legal. Especially eh, kailangan magkaroon kasi ang isang radiology department ng tinatawag na uh, radiation protection safety manual. Okay, doon sa manual na 'yon nakalagay lahat ng protocols and standards kung ano ang gagawin ng mga radtech in case na may mangyaring hindi ka nais na nais ano example aksidente mo na-expose ang pasyente or accidentally naka-expose ka ng pasyente na buntis what will you do? Paano mo kukumputin ang dose na natanggap ng pasyente at ang natanggap ng pitos? Diba? So, ano yan? Ano yung mga legal implications nun? Meron ka bang hindi nasunod sa protocol ninyo na nag sa pagkaka-expose ng accidental exposure ng buntis Diba? Mayro bang mga kakulangan ang inyong facility? Halimbawa, da walang nakalagay sa inyong facility sa x-ray room or sa pintuan ng x-ray room or sa dressing room walang nakalagay na ipagbigay alam sa radtech kung kayo ay buntis o sa palagay ninyo kayo ay buntis diba? or nakalimutan mo itanong sa pasyente kung kailan ang kanyang huling menstrual period so may meron ba siyang uh, recover uh, may consequences ba siya? Kung hindi mo siya natanong at hindi naman siya buntis nung na-x-ray mo, so okay lang. Pero, sa iyong sarili, alam mo may mali ka. E paano kung hindi mo natanong pero yung palang pasyente, hindi niya alam na siya ay buntis, in x-ray mo siya. Pag-develop mo ng film, ay may laman. Diba? Ngayon, si pasyente, nasulsulan ng ibang tao. Oh, idemanda mo yan. Malaki ang makukuha mong danyos dyan. Malaki ang makukuha mong damages. Pag dinemanda mo yan, sure, panalo ka sa kaso. Kasi in X-ray ka nila, buntis ka. Diba? So yung mga ganong bagay. Kaya uh, mahalaga na magkaroon ng Regation uh, Protection and Safety Manual.
Pero usually lahat naman ng uh, radiology department ay mayroong radiation safety, uh, radiation protection and safety manual. Dahil ito ay isang requirement para ang isang rad tech ay makatapos ng kanyang training for and training and certification uh, to become a radiation protection officer or RPO. Okay, clear po ba yun? Okay. So, ayun. Uh, ilan lang yan sa mga pag-aaralan natin dito sa subject na to. Okay. Uh, may mga malalalim tayong pag-aaralan. Such as the detection of radiation. Okay, paano ba ginagawa, sinasagawa ang uh, pag-detect ng radiation? Sa papanong paraan, mga bagay, uh, kailangan na uh, madetect ang radiation. Bakit kailangan sila ay ang radiation ay nadetect? Ano yung mga machines na ginagamit for? Or mga machines or uh, tools na ginagamit for uh, radiation detection and etc. Okay? So, do you have any questions? Okay, as for your assignment, Number one, paisulat. Number one, what is uh, the negligible individual dose? What is uh, the negligible individual dose? Okay. Ano yung what is yan? So, define and identify the value ng uh, negligible individual dose. Then, number number two, what are the annual dose limits? Okay. What are the annual dose limits? Uh, write them write them down in a table form. Okay. Uh, with SI units and uh, traditional units. Okay. And then Uh, in radiation protection, what do you mean by comparable risk? In radiation protection, what do you mean by comparable risk? Okay. Nakuha ba? Okay, so that ends our lesson for today. So if you don't have any questions, okay.